Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey! All right. Hey, hey, folks, here we are. We're back. We're in the studio. Oh, no, I didn't plug it in. What? Oh, you got you to plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. And look at this. Yeah. Ooh, look at that, huh, come folks? On. Can we get, are we getting this? I've always wanted to say, are we getting this? Yes, right You know there. when you have like a missing kid and you're like, hi, folks, look at this. Are we seeing this? Can we pan over here? Right. You know, it's always fun when the guest is on late night and he holds up a thing and like, can you see this? Which camera? Yeah, they do do that. It's that fun. was big. Yeah. You don't see missing kids anymore. I think kids are still missing, but I feel like I saw them on Milk. I saw them on TV. I saw them in my basement. Yeah, I see them all the time. I, I, they're definitely missing still, but I think they sure. went uh, the way of the, they got rid of the Milk thing. Right. I think because people have dairy allergies. Ah. Oh, they should can... put it on, you know, cheese. Oh. Well, that's also dairy. Right. Good point. Yeah. Oh, this idea stinks. Well, you could put it on, you know, I, I scrolled through my Insta. I'm getting, uh, you know, hey, buy the new iPhone or get these Adidas sneakers. How about little Timmy boy got anally raped? That's a good point. Yeah. Throw the kid up on the Instagram and also on like Pepsi, Coke, cupcakes, cookies. We're fat, aren't we? Ah, uh-huh. good point. We're fat shits. Pizza boxes. Pizza. Right on. That's a big pick. Yeah. Huge pick of the kid, like eating a slice of pizza. You, this is what you do. You tell the parents, get your favorite kid pizza pick. Do you know one of those kids that didn't like pizza? Oh, those kids. Put them in the gulag. That That's un-American. Gulag? That's, uh, that's like a concentration camp. Oh, I thought it was like a pasta. No, no, it sounds like it. I love the gulag with the sauce. Yeah, gulag marinara. Well, yeah, put it right on the pizza box. You know what the problem is? There's no money in it. Hmm. You find the kid. Yeah, sure, the family's happy. The kid is saved, but... The corporates, they want that moolah. Well, there's got to be a reward. you got to put up a reward. Hey, if you don't eat your crust, find a kid. 30 bucks. It's a must. <laughs> yeah, yeah you got to have some fun slang there. Um, all right. Well, yeah, we, we want to help the children. I wonder, because kids used to play outside more. You hear every 80-year-old comic going, back in my day, we rode our bikes all day, and then we fucked each other and drank out of the hose. And now it's like video games and phone. I wonder if kid napping has gone down or up. Napping? Kidnapping. Oh, kidnapping. Yes. I thought you meant kids just napping. And I'm no. Like, oh, yeah. Kidnapping, well, th- now they call it trafficking. Oh. There's a lot of trafficking happening. When I go to the uh, pl- the uh, airport, there's a lot of posters that say, don't help out with trafficking. I hate traffic. Yeah. It seems like if they were in traffic, we could get them. It stopped. Yeah, just smack that window. Right. We got you right here. <laughs> yeah. Do a little DUI checkpoint. We're good to go. I've got it right here in front of me. <laughs> um. Yeah, 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 kids. So I think, I don't know, maybe it's gone. I think it's also harder because they track them. They have phones, the cell phone. Ah. Now if you want to steal a kid, you got to break the phone. Right. And then they have the last time the phone was broken or whatever. They know where they got them. Sure. Plus they have surveillance cameras. Yeah. It's tricky. So maybe it's gone down. And maybe these kids, are you know, maybe they'll just fuck you. You don't have to steal them anymore. You just yeah. say, hey. Kids do know think? about fucking now. I mean, they got the pornos and all the internets right there, Pornhub. But they fuck less. Isn't that weird? Yeah. The more porn you give them, the more they don't fuck. Yeah, that's interesting. Which I guess goes in the face of like, these kids are seeing action or fighting on TV. we got to put a disclaimer. But maybe if you're watching it on TV, porn has proved that you're doing it less. The proof is in the porno. Ah. I think someone pointed out to me that there's porn where women just try on outfits. Like they get naked and they'll put on like a sexy outfit and then get naked again. I'll watch that. That I'm into. Uh Uh-huh. Because it feels real. I think they're just like regular old looking women. Like they're they're cute women. Like attainable. That sounds nice. There's women naked hot and then there's women in clothing hot. They're Mm. both hot. You see like a woman in high heels going out on the town. Her hair's did and uh, she's got a a short shirt with a blazer and uh, shoulder pads and nails. That's a hot look. The Oscars, I mean, Kristen Stewart, forget about it. I never even thought about her when people were like, who's the hottest? Who's your bucket list? Fuck it list? Whatever. I always like Emma Stone, Roseanne Barr. But now I saw Kristen Stewart. Mm, list. <laughs> it's a short one. But sure, sure. Ambient. Um, I, I saw you know, 
Kristen Stewart, she had like little shoe, like doily socks, like oh, I didn't kid see socks, the doily socks. And, and, and booty shorts. Oh, easy. We might have to put you on a pizza box here in a minute. <laughs> then she had uh, like a, a man's jacket unbuttoned with oh, no tits. Well, doesn't holler at a man's jacket. Jeez, you're really barking up my tree here. Well, man's she, jacket. What she, the hell is this? She put together like kid shoes, 80s <laughs> NBA shorts, and my dad's jacket, and the combo just. Got me. It triggered you right in your, your, your dick hole. Yeah, I think that maybe hit some childhood because you got the kid shoe. You're thinking of little girls at school when you're a kid. Then you got the boy shorts, which you see a boner at the in the locker room. And then you got the dad's jacket, and he fucked you. Yeah, exactly. And then heavy eye sh- I love oh, heavy eye so shadow. Do I. Love a long eye shadow. And then her hair was swooped. Uh, swoop. Can all we put like, a, a picture of her up or something? Put up a picture, Shelbo, or Chuck. Are we Stewart. getting this? Yeah, there <laughs> you go. Put it, up put there. it right there. Which camera? Get the, it up there. The swoop was big. She, Her uh, hair chose a political side and stuck with it. You know, there was no going back. It was a poofy swoop. A poof, poof swoop. swoop. <laughs> poof swoop riot. <laughs> riot. <laughs> hey, this is the best episode we ever did. Yeah, poof swoop sounds like a great cereal. It's- Hand over the poof swoop. <laughs> It's hard to say. With the milk. With the kid. With the kid. Uh, pizza. There we go. Oh, Pedo. Pedo pie. Pedo pizza. That's the name of my new chain. Hey, I like that. Pedo pizza. Well, that's what they thought was happening in D.C. You ever see that video of the cop? One of their favorite lines ever. No. So they had the, the shooter guy. He's one of the QAnon idiots. Oh, really? He thought they were selling kids at the pizza place, so he went there with his oh, machine gun. Oh, this is uh, Pizzagate. Pizzagate, yeah. Yes. But the funniest thing ever, the delivery, there's a cop, they get him out, delivery, ironically, ah. they, he comes out, and uh, you know they tackle him and put the knee in the back, and they start handcuffing him, and he's like, they got my kids in there, is my daughter in there, whatever oh, he's really? saying. Yeah, yeah. He thinks they're selling kids, and then there's like a, a black cop who just goes, oh, he's talking about pizza gate <laughs> and now the cop's like what and he's like it's pizza gate he's an idiot it was it's really funny that is i gotta see it i can't wait it's funny how certain foods like like kool-aid he drank the kool-aid mm. you know kool-aid just turned into this cult association right we even still say that oh that guy drank the kool-aid right he's gone off the, the reservation but uh i wonder if pizza was like you know domino's like come on what are you doing don't don't bring pizza into this. I'll oh, be trying gay. to sell some pies here. Well, I think just the one pizza place had the problem. Ah. The gay, it's a, and it's a gay pizza. Yeah, and then it puts it to the test: is any publicity good publicity? You know, they all that old saying. I think so because everybody wanted to go support the pizza because they've had trauma. They're gay. Uh-huh. And I think that's it. There you I, go. I want to go there. I'm like, let's go check it out. Plus, you want to see the scene of the crime. Yes. Like, like Columbine should sell pizza. Ooh, I like it. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, tippy-toe, tippy-toe. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But some of these... The, Sarah has a theory, and we talk about it all the time. A lot of these crime shows, they increase tourism. Like, there was that baby that went missing from... You sure uh, about that? I think Aruba was... They hit a, a low. I'm saying the docks. Like, I'm not saying they do. It's a it's a jokey theory. Uh, but you watch the dock, and you're like, this looks beautiful. <laughs> Like there was the one, like a room. If they did a Natalie Holloway, people would be going. We got to go down there. That's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. The oceans, the waves, and you could argue, much like Chipotle, send us some cards. Much like Chipotle was had that uh, E. coli scare, mm-hmm. and people were like, "I'm not eating there." I'm like, "I'm eating there" because they're going to go double down yes. on the cleanliness. Same with Aruba. Bring all the kiddos because nobody's going to steal them now. It's too risky. Exactly. There was another one where a baby's stolen from a house. She's sleeping. And they're all the families down the street. I think it was in Spain, Ooh. some island, or maybe it was Morocco. Or they left the kid in the house alone. Yeah, but they kept checking every eight minutes. It was really mysterious, and there's no um, what do you call it uh, solution. They don't ah. have it figured out. It's oh. still a mystery. Oh wow! But the whole time I'm like, I got to go to this village. It's beautiful, You're right in the water. <laughs> right? Hey, hey! Any press is good press. Apparently, nine eleven. I think actually does have a pizza place, and it's where it was. Ah, just saying tourism. You said Columbine. Right. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, uh, it's all, it, either way, 9-11, no Jews in the building. Yeah, well, this really fell apart. Ah, uh, so did the towers. Uh, but all right, so. Don't forget. You know, it didn't fall apart. Mm. The live ep. The live Woo-wee. episode. Woo, good Lord. What a killer. Good Maybe our Lord. best yet. Banger. I would say our best episode yet. I, we're always... Saying you gotta get the sure, Patreon. I know sure. times are hard, inflation. My father's gay. Will Smith is hitting people. But my God, this live app for the people that were there. There was about eighty people there. Go pack Joe and uh, the whole gang. A few other people. Yeah, we. Uh, 
a lot of gays, there. a lot of queefs. All uh, gays. Yeah. But, well, there was about seven seven or eight non-gays, and they got into the swing of things, baby. There was like an orgy. They didn't know what was going on, and before you know it, they were hard and wet. They loved it. Andrew Chavone ate shit. Ooh, oh, I, it was bad. I, I prayed the night before. I got on my knees and looked up at Allah, and I said, please let this guy bomb. He's taking my shadow or my thunder or my asshole or my virginity. He died! Thank oh, you, Allah! Died on the vine. I mean, Chavon. I haven't even talked to him. I deleted his number. I blocked Please. him. I threw, uh, you know, dog shit at his face. He's banned from the cellar, I heard. <laughs> they got his picture up. They said, don't let this queef in. <laughs> they can't. He's bad. I mean, it was bad news, Bears. You gotta hear it. I mean, just Ooh. every line. Stink, stank, Stink-a-roo. stunk. Yeah, I wish Will Smith gonna come up and give him a little uh, chin music, because that was a <laughs> real stink fest there, Shiv. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. He's dead by now. I got to assume. I mean, just the, oh, yeah. the bobble bomb. It was more of a bobble. Yeah, um, a bobble. Yeah, exactly. Good, uh, right at the app. end, he got one in at the buzzer. You know what it was like? It was like when the 16 seed plays the one, and it's like 140 to 12, uh-huh. and then they put the, the, the kid with Down syndrome in, right. and he hits a three from the <laughs> corner, and everybody carries him out. Right. That's what it was like. Yeah, yeah. He had a, uh, we were talking about kooks. I'll give away one joke just to tease you, wet your beak a smooch. But he had, uh, we were talking about kooks in New York, all the kooks around, and he said kooks a hazard. And boy, he got a uh, special needs make a wish clap off that, and then we got the hell out of there. That was pretty brilliant because they are kooks of hazard. They are. It worked. It was a double double. A yeah, double double and uh, double dribble. He got whistled for it. Oh, and, uh, yeah. He was dribbling on his chin. <laughs> yeah. Just traveling. P- PU. Oh, He's not going to yeah. be traveling for comedy. I'll no, tell you that. No one's going to book him. Get out of here. He's going to be in New York for a long time. <laughs> Man, it was bad. But, and speaking of butts, little hot high butts, Karen Fian. Oh, ripped it up. She was lunch. Forget Killed about it. it. And I great mean, caboose. Maybe the best guest we've ever had with respect to Ron Bennington, Chris DiStefano, Nikki Glaser, Glazer, Giannis Pappas, Michelle Wolf, Ari Shafir, Bert yeah. Kreischer, Nick Vaderot. Yeah, but she had some great zingers. She came out swinging. She had great lines. And sometimes, I don't want to get too queefy here, but sometimes with the, with the ladies, you might tiptoe a little. Maybe some mm. eggshell action, but she's all in, baby. She's fun. You can say whatever you want. Uncensored. Killed it, Feehan. Killed it. Killer, killed, kill, killer. Yes. And, uh, it was fun because we just had opposite. It was like a battery. We had a battery. Positive and negative down there. Assault and battery. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We had plus and minus, and Siobhan was a big old <laughs> subtraction. <laughs> and then we were hot. We were hot to handle, hot on fire. I mean, this was wall to wall killer. Easy peasy. You came out because I always have a little trouble at the start. It's kind of like fucking a girl you're like what do i do here do i put a finger in the ass do i lick a nip you know mm-hmm. sometimes when you go down on a girl you got to kiss the stomach on the way down like a weirdo sure i've never gone down on a girl but i've read articles i'll send you a link so <laughs> i never know how to start with the uh, you know it's just it goes from people sitting in chairs and looking at an empty stage to two idiots on stage mm-hmm. trying to be funny immediately yeah so it's a weird transition you know sure. it's a little elliot page there and somebody had a great joke about Elliot Page standing next to those two big adults and said, looks like it's a uh, bar mitzvah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's always – and then you came out – I mean, the first four things you said, just bam, bam, bam. It was uh, lights out, as it, they say, Fatty. It was hot. And we got to give a shout-out to Bulger for warming up the oh! crowd. Danny Danny Bulge came out. He did a set. And, uh, that ain't an easy spot either. He did a hot seven and uh, rocked it, baby. He's a pro. Check out Danny Bulger. Yeah, it He's was got diabetes. Really special, and uh, and by the way, I think it killed Chuck. He went into traction the next night. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. Back shot out of his thing or whatever. I don't know what's going on his with him. His spine is all wacky. He's, I I think he's he's fucking too much. I think he's blowing his back out here, getting pegged by all these whores. <laughs> I suspect he's full of shit. That's what I think. Oh no! I, I, I caught him showing me a Clinique ad. He was like, "This is the girl I'm having sex with," and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, that full of shit." That's, yeah, that's yeah. my sister's uh, friend. <laughs> Clinique ad? Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know, but he's uh, he claims he's plowing 19 ladies a week. So. Who but, knows? I think he's, he's Wilt Chamberlain over there in Staten Island. Yeah, so he's dead. We got Shelby out of retirement, back on the ones and twos. Everything feels right in the world. It's yeah. delightful. Yeah. So, uh, Chuck, you're dead to us. Anyways, uh, Chuck and Siobhan can go, you know, <laughs> fuck on a tree. They stink. Yeah, kick rocks, you fucking <laughs> gum guzzling Nazis. No, I'm joking, Chuck. We love you. Get that spine fixed. What do you got? Spina bifida? I don't know. 
He's in traction. I don't even know what that means, traction. Traction. What does that mean? Let's it, try to think about it. Let's put our heads together. Okay. Well, well when you're slipping, traction is good. That's what I'm saying. He's getting traction. His career is gaining traction. It's supposed to be good. But in traction, I think traction means like they. that's when they like. They really staple you in because if you move, it's bad. So I think that's when they like oh. they got your head glued to the thing. I think like you know uh, who's uh, R.P. McMurphy at the end. I mean he's lobotomized, but it's something ah. like that. I think it's when they really you're stuck. You're still, yeah. yeah. Can we get a can we get a reading on that, Shelby? I think traction is they tie you down. It's almost like Fuck friction. You. Like you need friction to get the tires moving. Mm. You need traction, and then when you're literally. Unmovable. That's the most traction, right? Because you're you're so much traction, you can't slide away, right? So nah, sliding no, no. away. It's the opposite of that. They're pulling you pulling. to make you stronger. Pulling what? This is hospital traction. Pulling their prick. You pull. Oh, you pull my leg. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of leg pulling. Pulling the leg. Ah, uh-huh. all right. It's so attraction. It's the opposite. attraction. Opposites attract. Ah. Uh-huh. There you go. Track suit. So in traction means they're like, it's almost like physical therapy, I guess. Oh, uh, they're, they're pulling to... on, the, on the muscles. But ah. traction sounds bad. I thought traction, maybe we're using it wrong. Well, I've heard women be like, uh, how's the pregnancy? She's in traction. They're like, oh, no. So maybe like that I've means they're that. slowly pulling the kid. Ah, pulling the kid out of the clam. Right. Interesting. Clam meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Clam bake. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that head comes out. I've heard, oh, this, check this out, Shelbo. There's stories of women orgasming. Oh, right? I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah, and some shit their pants. Oh, that's I, like, I, I know I did. That's my dream date to be crowning, shitting, and coming at the same time. <laughs> in I mean, front of a group of strangers, too. How weird to start your life. A baby, like, pops out. And then just has got his mom's shit all over him. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get my mother's shit on me until I was 21. No. <laughs> that was a hell of a slip and slide. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't know if the baby gets shit on it, does it? Well, if it's coming out of the pussy, the asshole is right there. Because she's laying, so I imagine the shit just goes... And then the head's coming out right here. I mean, the mm. pussy and butthole are right next to they're, each other, as you neighbors. know. It's like sheath, the, the, the ball and the shaft. Yes, exactly. So if the shit is spreading... It's yeah. got to be the baby must slip right on it. Well, I did read somewhere that, uh, or I didn't read this, I don't know why I said that, but my friend's mom has three kids, and she said every single kid tore the skin oh. between the vag hole and the A hole. Oh, my God. Three kids! That's, oh. I mean, these women with the birthing, it's it's horrific. I feel for them. She's triple vaxxed. That's the ultimate misogyny is biology. Mm. I mean, look at that. There, These ladies have to go through hell just to, to you know make a life. Yeah, it seems hard, and all we got to do is jizz, and they don't even get to jizz. Not I know. They can they can get a prego without even orgasming, yeah. which is a cruel trick. Prego biology. my ego. Yeah, <laughs> there Don't you go. know much biology. Don't know much about vaginal. Hey. Hmm? Oh, I thought you were trying to get my attention. Oh, no. I got you. But yeah, that live one was uh, it was special and just a great hag. People started showing up after. There was a bunch of comics watching and a uh, special night. And you know, we were in a different room. They put us up in the upstairs part, which is a little smaller. And I was uh, first offended. Like, what? You think we can't sell out? We sold out in 10 minutes, baby. You can't, we can't do the VU, the Village mm-hmm. Underground. But I think it worked better because that VU has a back area, and I think you lose a little bit. There's a disconnect. Yeah, and then there's more people that aren't fan. If you don't sell out, there's more randos. You got that right. And um, and a rando will really ruin one of our rants. I also think they make more money at the Ranto. VU with the stand-up show. Ah. They're giving us the door, I think, or half the door. I just remember right now we're going to get paid for that. I forgot, exciting. yeah. Yeah, no money for Siobhan. No, he should pay us. Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Native Deodorant. You've heard us talk about our love for Native. They just sent me. I got home, and there was a new thing. It comes like a little push pop. It's delightful. I love it. I want to lick it. There's no plastic. This was eucalyptus and mint. Ooh. It smells amazing. I put it on. I'm just smelling my armpits every couple minutes like Molly Shannon in that sketch. Nothing wrong with that. That's why Native is releasing their deodorant that that you know and love in new and improved plastic-free packaging. It's like an ice cream. It's really fun. I really do enjoy it. It's a little push pop. And it smells unbelievable. I can't wait to get home and just go smell it. Yes. You got to get yourself some. It's good for the environment. Native is doing their part to help our earth with their new 100% plastic-free and recyclable packaging. 
When you buy Native's new plastic-free recyclable package deodorant, you are saving 37 grams of plastic. Wow. That's impressive. Native is also a proud partner of 1% for the planet and are committing 1% of their plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental profits. This is great. I really care about the future of the planet. Here, here. Uh, with Native, you can choose from 10 cents. That makes sense. Including their classic coconut and vanilla sensitive formulas that are formulated without baking soda and even unscented. Wow. This is great. Ready to try plastic free deodorant, folks? Go to nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with stories or use promo code Tuesdays with stories at checkout and get 20% off your first order. 20%? That's one fifth. It's a lot. That's nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories, or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout for 20% off your first order. Thanks. Hey, hey, nothing wrong with that. All right, all right. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Lucy. If you're looking for nicotine gum, lozenges, or pouches to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day, there's only one stop you should make. Lucy. Oh, yeah. I got the gum. I got the lozenges. They taste good. They give you a nice little jolt of nicotine without all the horse shit that's in the cigarette. Good for you. Get on it. I like the flavors. What uh, What do you got there? Uh, if you've been looking for an alternative to smoking, why not switch to the nicotine product that you can feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's L-U-C-Y dot C-O. And use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Also, i got to read this disclaimer, disclaimer, warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, but you already knew that, so get on it, folks. And remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code TUESDAYS. Support the show and get 20% off with code TUESDAYS at lucy.co. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Fanimal. Fanimal. I love live events, but I hate buying tickets. The hidden fees suck, and coordinating with friends is a nightmare. It certainly is. I always end up fronting a bunch of money and chasing down my friends to get reimbursed. And if they flake, I'm stuck with the whole bill. You got that right. But then I discovered Fanimal. Fanimal has tickets to everything, and there are no fees. We were just talking about fees. The price you see is the price you pay. Guarantee Not you. only are the prices <laughs> prices transparent, so is my dad. But they've also almost always lower than anywhere else I look. And for any hot ticket like Coachella or a Laker game. Laker game? Who wrote this copy? A Celtics game, goddammit. Hey, they're on fire. We go, or Dave Chappelle. Fanimal is the always the cheapest option. Nobody goes to live events alone, do they? So why I've done it a few times. So why buy tickets alone? Fanimal's patented group purchase makes it easy. First you set a minimum size for your group and choose the number of tickets you want to pay for yourself. Then you invite friends. When the minimum size is met, everyone gets charged and receives their ticket. If the minimum size isn't reached in time, nobody gets charged. Mm. You don't commit, commit until your friends do. There you go. Oh, yeah. And Fanimal has amazing customer service. Don't take my word for it. Check out their hundreds of five-star reviews. That's right, hundreds of them. The next time you need tickets, go to Fanimal.com and sign up with Tuesdays for $20 credit towards your first purchase. Check out Fanimal and experience more. Yes, here, here. Back to the show. Thank you. All right, so that, well, last time we were, ta- we were at the podcast, the night before, you yes. had a big hot date. Yeah, well, the pod was on a Tuesday, as you do, and uh, the night before, I got I got a text from my agent saying, hey, what are you doing tonight? I said, oh, I got a show, or two shows, and he goes, well, if you want to get out of it, we got two tickets to the biggest WAP Dago show on the planet. Godfather, 50th anniversary. Sebastian Maniscalco. Whoa! Yes. All right, that wasn't bad, but uh, <laughs> I think that was him. I don't know if that was a doo-wop band or a retarded kid on a Sunday, but either way. I've never seen him, but it sounds like that, sort of. Yeah, he's got some noises and movements, uh, but i got to tell you, you know, going to the garden, it's a to-do. You know, the parking, mm. the, the, the line, the ticket, the boop-boop, the metal detector, take your keys out, all that. Sure. But when you got that VIP little uh, little uh, access, I mean, it's a game changer. Yeah, I know the VIP. I've been in that VIP, and it is something else. It's quite a feeling because you just feel like a real 
Swinging Dick. Yes, big swing. That's Bill, that's Will Smith. Aha, uh-huh. Swinging Dick. <laughs> that's great. That's not bad. Maybe I'll tweet it. Tweet it. So, uh, yeah, you're in the bowels. Is the Bono poster, the Gaga, the Cosby that hasn't been taken down yet? And there's food. There's I'm I'm going ham. I got uh, a mouthful of ham. I got a couple of Stellas in me. Great hang it was Rosebud. Uh, Baker, you sure we didn't talk about this? No, we didn't talk about okay. it. Okay, I haven't seen you since then. All right, it was Rosebud. It was uh, Mateo. Uh, Pat McGann shows up. It's so cool. Like, oh, there's the opener. This wow. guy's going to go on in front of twenty grand people, and he's just sitting in here talking to us. Twenty grand people, and then like eighteen thousand other people. Hello, folks. <laughs> uh, so then, uh, who else was there? There was one more cat. Hmm. Uh, Sean Patton. Shit. Sal Volcano. Sal Volcano. Yes, the Puerto Rican Patton, I call him. And I'm I'm wolfing down burgers and fries and chicken wings and all that. And the lady shows up. Everybody's hanging out. It's a great time. Then they go, do you want you to go to your box seat? He goes, sure. We go to the box seat. Pat McGann comes out. He does 20 minutes. You know, first couple minutes is shaky. They're seating. They're getting drinks. But he ripped it. He killed. He did a little crowd work. He's in the round, by the way. Wow, the round. Yes, yes, round table. And killed it. And then it's, you know, he goes off, and you're like, all right, I don't know much about Sebastian. I've never seen him live. I guarantee he'll be wearing a shiny jacket. Mm-hmm. And he, boy, was he. I mean, that thing came out. It was reflective. It was it was like a, he was doing construction, you know? You, you couldn't get past him. Wow. Did he have a shirt on underneath? He did have a shirt, thank God. Okay. I was wondering yeah. if he do his Kristen Stewart, Timothy Chalamet business. Oh, that's Chalamet. What was that? That's he Chalamet. like an ice skater. I tweeted Timothy Chalamet like, just like Zach Morris in the Zack Attack episode. <laughs> he had the same exact jacket, no shirt underneath. Right. I'm so excited. And uh, it was... It was Great. He came out and just ripped it. There was no political, no points, no activism, no nothing. It was just here's a bunch of funny shit about me and my, my family and my dick and my childhood. That's what I like. I like just silly, silly baloney. You know yeah. what I mean? And you get it. You, you, you're in the middle of it. Sal's laughing. He's, he's elbowing me. I'm blowing Mateo. It was like a great <laughs> night, and we're all having a fun time. We're all laughing. And I realized maybe I'm too uh, I'm of a judgy cunt with comedy. Mm-hmm. I'm a purist. I'm a queef, whatever. But I just kicked back, put my feet up. I had 19 beers in me. That might have helped. But uh, just had a blast. And you didn't want it to end. You know when comedy, you're in it, and you don't realize it's comedy? Sure. You know, you're just so slipped into that warm ocean of, of jokes that you're just, like, enjoying it. You know, you're not sitting there going, oh, that was a good tag, good right. callback, transition, anal, whatever. That's what the greats do, I guess. But the other thing that has to be noted or mentioned or said is that it's live. Comedy is meant to be consumed live. You got that right. That's why it becomes so special. I hate comedy specials. Check mine out a couple weeks, April 29th on YouTube. Here, here. But whatever you see on YouTube, on special, on HBO, on the big screen, it's just not as good as it was live in the room when you're with friends and you're feeling the laughter. You're seeing the laughter. You're part of the show. It's a dialogue back and forth, the laughter, the jokes, and coming back. When you're at home, you're just on your couch, isolated, watching other people at the show. It yeah. just doesn't work. Same with the concert. You got your phone in your hand. You got cheese doodles on your ass. You know, it's different. You're looking out the window at the neighbor who's changing. It's it's not the same. When you're in it, you feel it. It's it's like an orgy versus uh, porn. Yes. Ah. So just a great time, and we laughed, and we laughed, and it makes you love comedy again. And, and the, the crowd, they love him. Which also makes it fun to watch them, watch him. They're like, I mean, when he came out, it was like the Beatles. Yeah, that's fun. And I bet he doesn't get as much, maybe he does, I bet he doesn't get as many people being like, you fucking loser, you suck, you're an idiot. Because they just love him. And they're older. They they're older. They probably don't even use Twitter. Yeah, totally. And uh, they just had a good time. And I got to tell you, I walked around in the crowd a little bit. It, I'm talking real dagos. These people are speaking Italian. It was like an Olive Garden commercial. Oh, tea. Yeah, boo. Yeah, exactly. A lot of that. And uh, Paisan and uh, pedophile pizza, you name it. Great time. And I uh, left and did a set, which is always fun to go from this experience to like a little comedy club with 12 people at it. Yeah. You know, you get the both worlds there. Both are legitimate comedy, but very different settings. And uh, I just uh, ate a big bag of dicks. So oh, good times. Nice. Yeah. Last time I did um, Madison Square Garden, I've only done it three times, all with Louie. But the night before, I hadn't done a set in a couple of days. I was like, I had to warm up. So I went and did a bar show. Uh-huh. In a basement, 
at like uh, whatever that bar is that's right next to the garden. I was like a block away. <laughs> and right. that was my introduction. Like tomorrow I'm performing there. And yeah. it was like 10 people at a bar a block away. Yep. And you're like, I'm going to say all the same stuff. Isn't that funny? There's it's the same different. thing. That's the weird thing about comedy. It's kind of magical, but it's also fucking frustrating. It, Bill Burr is that famous story. He's doing the garden. The night before he goes... Now let me run some jokes at the LOL Comedy Club, which is some uh, rinky-dink joint on 44th Street. Rinky stink. And they didn't even let him in. They were like, we don't know who you are. He's like, what? I'm doing the garden. Yeah, so he went home. You never heard this? No, I never heard it. Famous story. Yeah, he popped in. He's like, ah, no stakes here. I've never heard of this club. I'll just pop in and knock it out. And they were like, oh, you got to be booked. He's like, I'm doing the garden. They're like, well, whatever. That, I don't know about this garden. Good luck with the fruits and the vegetables, but uh, wow. you're not getting on this stage, fatty. Never heard of corduroy. Never heard of corduroy. Um, the very pants I was returning. What was I going to say? Every Something about my birthday. Madison Square Garden. Oh, speaking of the Italians, I was hanging out with Dan Bulger, who's mm. Irish. Sure. But we were talking about the Sopranos. Uh-oh. Here we go. He does not care for it. What? I found somebody else. He's like, I watched it. Him. It stinks. It's horrible. And, and, and Dan Bulger, one of the smartest whips out there. I mean, he's this guy is a, a historian. He loves movies. He's a great comic. He's a buff. Hates it. He's a buff. He's not buff, but he's a buff. No, he's frail. And he weak. hates it. So we're building a movement. We're up to two. All right. You got two for Hey, you guys are like the trans in the 80s. You know, you're getting there. Exactly. Maybe in 40 years you'll be cooking. But right now, we all hate you. Someday we're going to win a bunch of medals for, uh, for swimming. For, yeah. <laughs> From swimming, exactly. <laughs> the Sopranos League, um, uh, anti-Soprano. Yeah, well, I disagree with both of you. I think it's a great show, but uh, hey, good for good for you finding a, a soulmate. I know we fucked in the ass for a couple of days. Sure, it's like that Geraldo joke: a gay lion tamer hooked up with another gay lion tamer. That's you. Me two, me three. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how's it looking, Shelby? We had some technical difficulties. Shelby's doing something over there. We might have lost the whole episode. I'm going to kill myself. Oh God, we were we were rolling in the beginning too. I know. It was insane, but then now if we didn't lose it, now we're talking about how great the earlier episode was. But I'm in my head. I'm all I'm all pipes over here. I can't focus. It's all pipes, uh, pipe laying pipe, but pipe bomb. Oh, mm. I hope not. But yeah, yeah, great time at the Sebastian show. The garden's a magical place. It's so cool because you're on the street. There's a hobo shooting jizz at you. There's a guy <laughs> selling hot dogs, and there's a crazy lady with you know 38 bags of cans. And then you go beep, boop, 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 down some stairs, and now I'm in the the, ba- the greatest arena. I'm watching a killer comic who's murdering, and then you, you finish there, and you leave, and it's back to jizz. I always think that the comedy cellar, it's just this little bastion, because as we talk about every week, the, it's Kook Central, and, and you, uh, whatever the fuck that neighborhood, Greenwich Village. Sure. I mean, the kooks are just out of control. Kook's a hazard. Kook box. And... You're downstairs, and you just feel so safe and warm, and it's packed, and there's the brick in the basement, and you got to get down there. It's killer. Well, it's a womb, Jerry. A womb. It's a womb down in these comedy clubs, these basement rooms. Uh, the light is gone. The sun is gone. The, the, the sounds are gone. It's just you guys in this little fucking capsule together. Yes, hiding in my moment. room, safe within my womb. I touch no one, and no one touches me. A womb with a view. Um, Without a view, I guess. Womb, 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 all the way home. That doesn't really make sense. The view sucks. Uh, yeah. Bad show, yeah. But uh, no, it's exciting. But can I ask you? I was gone. I was in Florida Place. for a few days. Oh, lay on Tampa. Well, Tampon. you were you were gone. Okay, so we have it. You think we have it, Shelby? All right. Okay. We. Uh, what are the kooks like? Give me this kook situation here because I've been gone. I keep hoping they're cleaning it up. I read about Eric. Was that Coke? No, that was a silica packet. Silica. Tom Selica? Uh, no, Toyota Selica. It's a, uh, you know, they keep oh, the, the moisture. Oh, the salt, the moisture, yes. Yes, yes, there you go. Oh, my, just got, my pussy just got soaking wet. <laughs> well, no, that would dry it. Oh, I thought it kept it wet. No, no, it keeps it dry. It keeps the moisture out of clothes. Oh, no kidding. So they don't mold. Oh, well, my pussy got wet for another reason. I All think right. It was Shelby's I'll, smile. I'll take it. Put a, <laughs> put a towel down. Because the kooks are crazy in the village, and I'm all fucked up. That didn't go anywhere. It's on you. Ah, uh, George, All right. George is saying cut it. So I'm so scared because, I mean, like, I, I run. Cup it. We finished the uh, the live pod, and I told you, me and Siobhan, we just sprinted up to the couple blocks, and we, like, like Jerry and Kramer with the yeah. fucking oh, street toughs rob them. And I slide across the hood like Marty McFly into the door so no kooks get me. Is it getting any better? Because I Googled Eric Abrams. 
And this guy, he's arresting people. Oh, he started he's a cracking. task force. He's doing Ernie McCracken. I don't know what's going on. He's like McGruff the crime dog out there. He's <laughs> taking a bite out of these kooks. But I got to tell you, he should have shown uh, the, the hobos Siobhan's set. They would have they would have scattered. <laughs> That's how bad it was. But uh, yeah, yeah, the kooks. I don't know. I think it's the same. I, I walk around every day. The day is fine. Day is good. There's a couple out there. They do the uh, the drop the food trick, which right. we've all seen and heard about. But yep. They're 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 somewhat behaved, but then that sun goes down and it's full zombie mode. Well, it just got cold again. The cold is back because it sends them out of the subway. The subway was where it's a problem. Yeah, that's where you're isolated. And the street, I'll jump them, I'll run them, I'll scale a tree, I'll you know I'll throw like a hot dog over there. When they turn around, I sprint away. Sure. But the subway, it's they're just on you. Well, let me ask you this, there, sloppy jalopy, because I was showering thinking about you the other day, and Thank I you. I thought. You're doing jujitsu for like three years now, yeah, four years yeah, now. Like, that's right. I feel like look, nobody wants to to headlock a hobo, which is a good good term. But you nobody <laughs> wants to headlock a hobo. But you you know you can handle it. I feel. Yeah, but that's the thing, and this is what I talked to Rogan about. Is like then you're in a fist fight. What if they pull a shiv, a knife, mm-hmm. and it's not just the Siobhan. physical threat. It's the discomfort, this hornet in the car of like, here we go. And then it's always the move of like, when do you pull the trigger right, and kill yourself? Right. You know what I mean? Because you're Will like, Smith. the guy's close going, hey, you fucking, uh, and I'm like, do I just punch him now? And then people right. are going to go, what are you doing? You're punching a homeless guy. It's a whole situation. I know. But I do have to remind myself sometimes that I know how to throw an elbow and uh, masturbate sure. in front of my wife, you know, so yeah, yeah. there's something to be done. So are they. But I just I don't like the that feeling of like oh god here we go oh it's the coots. worst it's the worst I, I I have a friend who told a story he was sitting Uh-oh. on the subway uh oh wonderful comic and a and a big kook stood over him and was like I want money and he was like I don't have any money and he's like I want money Ooh. and he stood over for about three stops Ooh. and he wasn't I think he was pretending to be homeless he was a big muscle guy oh no and just standing over him like this and it was just him and like two Asian ladies on the train which is a little hurtful that the guy didn't intimidate them. Asian ladies. Yeah, he went right for that. He went to a man. You're like, oh, jeez. Yeah, well, but, the Asian ladies, they could know a kung fu and stop Asian hate. But, I mean, that's horrifying. Yeah, that is. What do you do there? Do you hit the guy in the nuts? Do you bail? I mean, he got out of it, obviously. That's the thing. All of a sudden, you're in a wrestling match, a fist fight. I think he just waited it out and was like, oh, my God, I hope this guy, and you have a fucking heart attack. Yeah, that's the worst feeling, the awkwardness, the uncomfortable. Even when a guy comes up and he's like, come on, come on, man, can I get a dollar? And I was waiting at a red light, and I'm like, ah, I can't go. So the guy's like, come right. on, man, give me a dollar. And I'm like, I, I, I got a credit card. He goes, give me the credit card. I'm like, what are we doing here? Right, the credit card. It's just, uh, it's it's unsettling. It's unpleasant. Yeah. But yeah. I think Eric Abrams, is that his name? Abrams. Or is it Adams? Eric Adams. Adams. I think it's Adams. Family. Eric Abr- Abrams was the, the producer from L.A. Oh, this is Comedy Central guy. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. Great guy. He Great. would solve this. He's handsome, too. I think he's 6'4", that kid. Yeah, something like that. He's a hunk, hunk of a man. But yeah, the kooks, they're, they're out and about, and... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe with the summer it'll get better because they'll go lay out by the beach and the Rockaways. Who the hell knows? But right now it's chilly again, so I'm sure it's <laughs> kicked up again. But uh, well, everybody who hates the hell knows? tourists. They're like, oh, tourists this, tourists no. that. But they fill the comedy clubs Bring and they in. make it safer because they're like, I lost to Little Voodoo Garden. Right. And they're like, <laughs> whatever. And you're like, Haha, they got him. Exactly. The more normies we can get in there, the better. Mark Normies. Yes, exactly. Uh, I went, troopers. I walked to buy uh, Ka- Katz's Deli the day, lying around the block with a bunch of douches with the uh, the caricature paintings and the weird, uh, you know, photos of them at Times Square and then the, the, the observation deck. So I was like, all right, the tourists are back. Yes, that's nice. I like the tourists. The clubs are full. And I'll tell you what else we need <laughs> is um, a napkin. <laughs> The business is back. Sixth Avenue, it's a hellhole. By yes. IFC, there's like three blocks with no businesses. You got to start putting some bars and a CVS and an ambulance, whatever the fuck, I know. in there so they can go, hey, shoo, shoo kooks. Every, you shoo the kooks. Every storefront looks like a like they're doing a BLM sale because just boards that say BLM, BLM. I know. It's bad. So, like, well, how about a business? Business lives matter. But I think the inflation and all the business. You ever watch like 30 seconds of news and you're like, I'm going to kill myself? Oh, I don't do it anymore. I, I get all my news from uh, children on the playground. <laughs> it's just tell me what you're thinking. They're like, well, I shit myself. My hands are sticky. I go, got it. I move on. That was me. But um, <laughs> it's, um, 
It's terrifying. It's but bad. Hopefully uh, it gets a little better, but the subway is full. And now there's like, you know, um, what's it called? Omicron B or whatever. Oh. B, B, A, two, bachelor's degree three. <laughs> By the way, I thought Delta 8 was COVID too. Have you heard about Delta 8? I think I have. That's my status. <laughs> Right? I think I'm, I'm Delta Comfort 8. Who the hell knows anymore? There's 19 <laughs> groups, 15 uh, leagues under the sea. But do you know about the Delta 8? I don't know. Del- I know Delta 88, which is an old car. But all I keep hearing of the, is um, it, Delta Burke, also an old car. <laughs> <laughs> A van. Sure. But, um, van, uh, van Nostrand. Vandalism. Um what the fuck was I just talking about? I had some, oh, Delta 8. Yes. Have, do you know about this, Shelby? You ever hear that term? I don't know, 8. It's a new weed thing, Delta 8. I've heard mm. like four people say it. There was a comedian that was doing a bit about it, and then Bulger was shopping for weed in Tampa, and the guy's like, Delta 8. It's like the new THC horse shit. Oh. But I shit my pants. I thought I thought we were all going to close our doors again. Or <laughs> Sounds like a strain, but then that's what they call weed, a strain. That's what I had. I did, uh-huh. This is the exchange. I said, I thought that was a new strain. He's like, it is. Oh, and I was like, funny. no. But the, I meant like COVID or whatever. That's a bit. It's kind of like when I worked at FYE for your entertainment, formerly Record Town, when 50 Cent came out. I did the classic bit. I worked there, and the guy was like, you got 50 Cent? And I was like, oh, no, I can't help you. Uh, and he's like, you know, you got 50 Cent here? And I was like, listen, pal, this is a place of business. Get out of here. It's a who's on first over there. And you could do that with the who as well. You know, hey, what, do you, what band do you like? The who. Or which one? The who. <laughs> right. No, I'm asking you who. Blah, blah, or blah. Or guess you. It's a fine product. Oh, uh, guess but who. Also, guess who is another band. Another yeah. band. And there's yes. 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 Yeah. traffic. You got yes? Which one? <laughs> All right. Um, and then there's Rush. I'm in a rush. <laughs> All right. All right. We're doing too many. Boy, I'm really uh, zen. I nine inch nails. I found Nirvana. Yeah. <laughs> um, Woo. Yeah, that was fun. Celica. Yeah. Um, Pack it. But yeah, so I just got back from Kentuck. Oh, you're in Kentuck. Now, Kentucky, you know, it's known for the toothless, the guy wearing a barrel, the overalls, the jug with three X's on it. And you get there, it's the skyscrapers, there's black people, there's cars running around. It's normal. I know. It's just like there's so many hack bits. Ah, oh, Kentucky. Do, 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 do. I'm like, we got to cities or just regular people. Yeah, that was your also your Sebastian impression again. <laughs> but yeah, it's just regular people. George Clooney, Muhammad Ali, Diane Sawyer, uh, Jack Clooney, Harlow. Clooney, Kentucky? I think so. No kidding. Yeah, look at that. He should claim that more. That would put that state on the map a little more because all they got is bourbon and derby. Um, and Bul- chicken. Bulger was telling me, I guess there's an old Letterman where George Clooney was the lead guest, and then the band was like one of these crazy metal bands that wears masks, mm. spooky masks. And then at the end of their set, Letterman came over and he goes, hey, you want to go mess with George Clooney or something like that? Let's spook him, whatever. Uh, you know, he does the pranks. Yeah, spooks. Uh, I fucked up the line. So what happened? That was it. That was oh, the joke. Oh, oh. He said, hey, do you want to go mess with them or something like that? Oh, I fucked funny. it up. Cut this part. It sucks. Ah, it's fine. Oh, jeez. Letterman oh. was funny. Letterman nice had, a, had a moment. He's doing a new uh, show, I think, on Netflix. Right? Oh, I bet it's serious. Enough uh, of the serious already. Yeah, serious XM. But uh, <laughs> so Kentucky, I get down there and I'm like, I wanted some bourbon. I want to watch a horse fuck itself or whatever it is. So... Then you get there and you're kind of disappointed because there's nobody in overalls. There's nobody with the thing out of the mouth and mm. the straw hat. But then on Saturday, you know, I had a couple pops the night before. I wake up with a hangover. I go, I got to see some of the city. I've never been here. Let's fuck around. Walk out the door. Take a right. <whistles> There's a state fair going on with goat Ooh, races. Wow. Goat races, goat kissing booth, uh, goat. Dave Chappelle's the goat. Milk and goats, goat milk, goat cheese. Good times. Yeah, go goat. Dancer. Yeah, there was a donkey there, a donkey show. I got to pet the donkey. I took a mm. photo with the donkey. Uh, yeah, it, it really uh, kept up its name there. Did you see some bare feet, some long grass, some overalls? Some Not really. There was a little bit of some, some cowboy boots, some cowboy hats, and some, some yokels. But I got to tell you, this club is great. It's a brand new club. I was the third headliner there. This thing is shiny, sparkly new. What's the club again? Louisville Comedy Club. It's the same guys who do Appleton, Tacoma, Spokane, oh, Oklahoma City. They're good. They're good. And the staff was great. They run it with an iron queef. And I got to tell you, though, those audience drink. Uh, so you better go in there. It's a slugfest. They love the whiskey. Yes, Tennessee they do. Tennessee whiskey, Kentucky bourbon. 
Exactly. You know, Massachusetts racist. It's all there. Right, right. I had I had a guy, Blake Hammond, Connor King. We had a great, one of those great weeks. We sat down and wrote on, on Friday for like three hours, working on our act, working on bits. And these guys came out. These guys hit me up. Uh. And they go, hey, we see you're coming to Kentucky. We live in Nashville. We'll drive there. Can we film you? Mm. I was like, bring it on. They're like, here's some of our work. It's all top notch. We just had a great time. We're getting clips. Now you're writing Kanye bits because you know they're going to be there. Right. It's a good exercise. Yeah, that's nice. I was in Tampa. No film crew. A couple people reached out, but you're like, oh, my God. And then last year, the MC was filming the shows, and he gave them to me. So I was like, ah, someone will film it. Ah. Then you get there. No film. I'm an idiot. No film in the cameras. Well, Tampa films. They have a camera. Well, they film if you give them an SD card. Ah, SD. But I don't have a suck dick card. Sure, sure. My wife took it from me and... You know, whatever. I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting oh, rusty. Yeah, you're on fumes. What happened? Well, you, you know, know I was worried that we lost some. There was ah, some gold yeah. there. I had a couple flubs, and uh, I got someone coming to my house. I got a house guest any minute. Oh, I hate showing a house up. guest. A week. What? I was all excited. Do you ever have this? Where you're just excited every day? You're like, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna hang. I'm gonna show the town, paint the town brown. And then all of a sudden, the morning of, you're like, I don't want a house guest. No. This is horrible. God, no. What, do, you have to hang, do you have to watch TV with her? Do you have to chit-chat? Do you have to show her around? Do you have to get her a Metro card? How does that work? I'm not sure, and she's like a tough broad, and I'm afraid of the kooks. So I have to like come up with reasons to take a lift. I'm like, ah, it's a little chilly. We might want to grab a lift. And she's like, isn't the train two bucks? And I'm uh, like, well, don't worry about it. I like a li- I like to cram into a lift. Yeah, well, if you're, if you're spotting it, it's fine to take a lift. She'll be happy to get a lift if you're paying. Good point. You'll be fine. But yeah, I don't know. The house because you never know how much you got to uh, monitor because New York's hard enough on its own. We're all eating a queef sandwich out there and then somebody else is tagging along behind you. It slows you down. You're out of your rhythm. Right. Well, then you're also worried that you're like, what if you're not that compatible Ooh. what if i'm like boy my uh my father's retarded and she's like what are you crazy i got a retarded kid and right. he's not your father or whatever Ooh, yeah. i am your father you got to be able to say retard around so that's that's like one of my staunch rules yeah you know these guys who their wives or these women who have husbands that you're like hey don't talk like that you're like i'm with you forever <laughs> we're fucked <laughs> like i can't say this or he can't say that this is not good well as i always say you want a wife who was born in the 70s oh, i got a nice yeah. 1978 woman she's never ever once been like hey don't say that around me no no she saw reagan and did blow and got aids so yeah she's lived yeah she saw him live at the uh, orpheum um <laughs> but i was in tampa tampa florida side splitters love the split ss oh yeah one of the greats one of the great clubs and really soul which is exciting hell and, yeah uh, a lot of Tuesdays came out. I mean, it was Tuesdays all over the place. It was they like really Wise are. Guys. Right. Uh, they were everywhere. Wise guys, I was doing the line from Goodfellas, but also Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. Sure, a lot of gays there as well. I just love side splitters, and BT has taken over, and you talk about running with an iron fist. Uh, Best guy in the business, and they added a, there's a bathroom back there now, and they got room. the green room back there, and it was just beautiful beautiful they got a new condo i mean that guy gives a shit we got drunk one night he's like i won't pay for a room i won't do it i was like ah i love it i stayed at the condo with bulger i have a hotel bulger's in the condo dan bulger and uh we drive down there i was like i gotta drop you off i went in the condo new condo i'm like i'm staying here with you no way it was old school i mean we bunked up together we slept in the same room because we don't want to we don't want to make them make two beds so we fucked every night there's a little back porch we were having cigars i smoked about three cigars a day that was a mistake my throat hurts yeah yeah that'll get uh, you he saw a gator which was wild well he's a little slow so it might have been something else but Uh he thought it was a gator that's close enough sure what are we talking quarterback or a linebacker that was a big long Long gay tour. Oh, wow, a gay tour. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Better than a straight tour. We should go on a gay tour together. The yeah. gay tour. <laughs> the Florida gay tour. We could do a thing. The gay tour. That's not bad. We go to Jacksonville, Tallahassee, uh, Key West. I love it. You're a Florida gay tour guy. gay tour. That's big, baby. God, these ideas, they just spill out of me. I love a spill. Yes. Oil spill. Oh, BP. Spill the beans. BTBP. Ah, uh-huh. DP. Put it in my ass. Yeah, double pen. Thank you. Director of photography. But, boy, we had a great time. And this is the thing. A lot of these comics, they write to you and they go, can I open for you? Can I open for you? Here is the most, for young comics out there. Please. The most, let's see if you agree with this. The most valuable thing you have as a feature act or an opener 
is to have good notes when the headliner is Ooh, working on a new hour. That's a lovely nugget you just threw out there. Because I'm trying to build a new hour, and I said that to Bulger. We rode on Saturday, like, much like or Friday, much like yourself. He's smoking weed. I got a cigar. We're sitting out in the sun. I have my shirt off. We're just having a nice time. We're bouncing bits back and forth for like an hour and a half. And I'm writing everything down. Yes. Some people go, what if you said this? And you're like, God, you're uh, awful. I hate you. Yeah. Everything he said. And it's not like, I'll write a joke for you. It's like, what about this as an angle? Maybe you say something about that. Right. Or that thing of like, you tell a story and he's like, that's a bit. Yes. That's the most valuable thing a comic can have is giving good thoughts and notes and feedback. If we're doing a listing, Joe Listing, I would say it's valuable is, is that Having notes off stage, watching, caring about the headliner stuff, whatever. We're all trying to get better here. Two, good. You have a good act, solid act, opener. Should be a good act. And then three, oh, him. good hang. Him. Good hang is important. That's very important. Because even if they're a killer, you're like, well, I hate being around you. But the bouncing is part of the good hang. True. True. Good point. But, uh, yeah, man, it was fun. We had a great time. And then the basketball tournament's on. The golf tournament's on. So we're watching golf, watching basketball. We went for long walks. And it helps to have someone who's like, i, I got to get some steps in. I'm like, me too. I'm yes, a step guy. Yes, love a step. So, step nine. You know, 12 step. We went step, step walking. Step and, dead. Uh, we went to some Chipotle. We went to some uh, the other place. And the shows were just killer. Friday early, Saturday, 8 p.m., Unbelievable. They want to laugh. I'm thinking Great next shows. special side splitters for you. Maybe. I mean, I do really well there. I really uh, like the people down there. I like the stuff. And then they open a second club that's in a movie theater. Mm-hmm. We might go down and show the movie there. Maybe do a couple of <laughs> bullshit. Ooh, a gay tour. Me and Sweet Lou, yeah. Do a show the movie, do a couple things. And we might be back there. It's getting finalized August 14th. Big show. Big show. Big, huge show. Secret show. Well, the reason is secret, but we're coming back down for a little fun in the sun. It's going to be not something. And this is going to be a lineup. Oh, yeah. Like, I this mean, is primo. You're not going to get this at the garden. Yeah, this might be uh, keep an eye out and ear out. By the time this is out, tickets may be on sale for this one. This one's going to be the gays and uh, a Jew and another guy. Yeah, yeah, little guy, big guy, fat guy, ugly guy, funny guy. It's the whole gamut. That's just me. (laughs) Um, um, (laughs) That's going to be something. So that was great. And then uh, came back yesterday. I had the 7 a.m. flight, which is always brutal. That means you got to be there at 6. You got to get up at 5.30. I get up. I get up. But you know me. That's you. Mm. I'm a psycho. OCD. I I like tits. I like, you know, feet. I like my mother. Sure. I like like your mom. So I set the uh, alarm for 4.15. Oh, good Lord. Plus, I rented a car. Ah, so you got to return the car. And the car is a shuttle. Ah, then shuttle Tampa Airport. Cock. There's another train. You got to take two trains. That's uh, like Auschwitz. I know. You got to transfer. They only had one train. This I, is worse. I feel like if they had to transfer, that would be the worst part of the whole thing. <laughs> okay, off the train, off the train. <laughs> You're getting on this train. Like, uh, oh, oh, we God. can't get a direct flight. Don't get make cut. me transfer. Yeah, yeah. Brutal. Um, I wonder if anyone transferred camps. They're like, listen, I got my paperwork here. Can you transfer me to, for Auschwitz to. Uh, What's the other it's one like getting there? traded Krakow. to go to J- Drakow or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you got try. I got to play for the other team now. Right, different chamber. I got one year of eligibility. Yep. Anyway, so I get up four fifteen. The alarm goes off, which is always weird because you wake up like this. Duh! You sure, know that, that alarm? sure. The Cosby wake. Normally, an alarm, you're like, oh boy, hey. but those four a.m. Yeah. Oh, it's a nightmare. So I get up, I drive over there, and nah, nothing crazy, but just you fly home, you land, and it's like my wife is still in bed. It's like 10, p- 10 a.m. It's not even. I was in my house at like a little before 10. It was like 9, 39 a.m., and uh, sneak into bed, take a little nap. It's Oscar Sunday. Siobhan came over, and he was uh, a little more on. I hope so. Jeez, I don't know if I'd let him in the home. I know. You talk about a feature that can help you right after that thing. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. So did he get in bed with you guys in the morning? How does that work? No, he came over a couple hours later, and uh, we ordered pizzas. Sarah's sister came over, and it was real fun. We watched the basketball. and Better just pizza. Yucked and shucked. I, w- I wish you lived in Queens. We could be hanging every day. I know. It'd, it'd be nice. And But now you got uh, you got a little Airbnb downstairs. Well, I'm just saying, Brooklyn fell through. Maybe Astoria. Yeah, Long maybe. Island City, living a high rise. Yeah, you got a pool out there. You got parking. It's pretty snazzy. Then one train, bang, you're in. Yeah, that's it, folks. 
All yeah, right. Something to think about. It's not bad. Not LIC, bad. Donnelly's over there, myself. It's a good group out there. I think uh, Vecchione, Soder, the other guy. No, they both moved. They're in Gramercy. Yikes. Well, that doesn't bode well for the area. Well, you got, I mean, you got uh, Greg Stone, you got Anthony DeVito, you got John Fit. Well, John Fish moved. I think yeah, James shit. Madden's out there. James Andy Madden. Fiore. What about uh, Shane Gillis? Uh, oh, um, Brennan right. Sagalow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JP Tom, McDade. Tommy Pope, all those guys. Shelby. Your Queens, that's right. That's Shelby's right. over there. Okay. Um, who else is over there? Sarah Talabash, Caitlin Paluflo, Steve Rogers, Ron on Hirschberg, uh, Andrew Chavon. A lot of yeah, just you lost me at the end, but all right, yeah, that's pretty good. Just a lot of whatevers. It's a who's who of who cares, but uh, yeah. we could use you. Yeah, the who. World Health Organization. But all right, maybe I'll think about it. Yeah, well, if I could go Brooklyn, why not go Drag Queen? Why not go Queens? And here's the thing about Queens both airports. I live 15 oh. minutes from LaGuardia. You're right. I'm the like airport. 15 minutes from the airport. That's insanity. Get a big townhouse with a pool and a bar. And if you go, if you get in the highway, you just you're right out. The GW's right there. The, the Midtown Tunnel's right there. And True. there's less of these fedoras with the skinny pants. Yeah, <laughs> and there's less kooks as well. No kooks. We're kook free. Kook free. All right. Kook all right. Zero. That's not bad. That's my favorite drink. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, you got a pretty good case here, Fatty. And Long Island City, very pie with the. I mean, get a big old high yeah. rise with the window, floor to ceiling. They you got, smush your tits up there. Oh, I love tits on a glass. They got restaurants. They got bars over there too. It's a nice little strip on what is that, Vernon? Vernon. And then you got Grove Thirty Four, by the way, ah. which I'm doing. I'm doing a monthly residential. What? April twenty fifth is the next one. You got to come over. I'm doing one already. I think uh, April, whoever the hell, whatever. I don't know. One of those Aprils. Come on, that's a Wednesday. That was another great night. We packed it out. I had everybody come over. I think we might have talked about that one already. I can't remember. No, we didn't talk about it. It was uh, uh, Andrew Chavon, um, uh, Gabe Malika, um, Isabel Hagen, and um, somebody else. Oh, Matt Wayne. Uh, is he Astoria? No, but he came all the way okay. out, and the show was sold out, packed, and we hung at the house first. Then we went to the other house. We were kicking uh, balloons around. Chuck shot it all. That'll be on my YouTube. Love a balloon. He shoot himself. Yes, Chuck, get your act together. <laughs> get your back together. Yeah. The back fuck? in black. Jesus, this guy's a mess. The spine. <laughs> Spine. It's so weird. Someone talk about their spine. I know. What are you, Mr. Burns? Come on. <laughs> You're in traction. Oh, he's not attractive. No, uh, that one's gonna no. hurt. I'm just kidding. You look great. No, but the ladies uh, seem to be sitting on his face or something. You got to get a lady to sit on your face and your dick just to balance you out. You're, you're crooked. Mm-hmm. He All is right. crooked. Well, All right. Well, I think we got to wrap it up. I mean, I don't know what time it is. What time is it? What do you think, Shelby? Are we over or under? Or what's the over under? Under where? Oh, oh, well, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's not bad, that's okay, something. yeah, sure, but you throw in 75 ads and a couple plugs. Let me just throw this at your asshole and see if it farts. Okay. So, I had a 3.30 flight last night. 3.30? That's all I could, that, Kentucky's got no options. This is a 3.30 a.m. flight? 3.30, there was a 5.30 a.m. Oh, yeah, sorry, oh, see. p.m. You said last night. Ah, well, afternoon. I got you. So... It's like, ah, I hate getting, you lose the day. So mm. you're like, I'm going to get some shit done while I'm in Kentucky, just because sure. I don't want to just dick around at the airport for nine hours and then fly out, and then you land in New York about six. Yeah. Lose the whole day, the whole night, or whatever. So I get some shit done. I feel so good. You know, I do the, some, I hit the gym. I go out to eat, have a nice meal at uh, Gordon Biersch Brewery. Gordon Biersch. It's not great. I like the sound of that. It's not good. It's like a shitty Ruby Twos. Ugh. gay. But uh, so I get all my shit packed. I do some work. I get my stuff done. I get out to the airport a little early. I feel good. Land. And I go, I don't think I brushed my teeth today. Mm. You ever have one of those where you're like, I don't know if I did yeah, that. Look who you're talking to. Yeah, yeah, sure. Type two. <laughs> so I go, uh, uh, yeah. Did I leave my bag? My little, uh, what do you call that? The Dob kit? Top kit. What is that called? Toiletries. Future? Oh, toiletries. Yes, yes. You know, it's got my electric razor, my Viagra, my uh, my brush. I love my brush. And it's all in there. I got pills in there. I got drugs in there. I got razors in there, toothbrush. I don't think you're using your brush right, by the way. <laughs> Jesus. I haven't hit it today. It's a little bed head. Yeah, it's no good. Worse than roadhead. Like but, Harpo. So I, pa- I just 
packed up everything, and I had so much time that I somehow, isn't it weird, like, in a rush, I would have remembered it, but right. with more time, I forgot it. Mm. It's too like, much time. Too much time, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm now I call the hotel. They go, well, you got to sign up for lostmystuff.com. you got to get the app. I'm like, oh, oh the apps. I hate an app. Get out of here with the apps. Give me the main dish, the entree. Yes, so I, I, that's what you saw me doing. I was like, oh, i got to put my credit card oh, in. Oh, God, entree the giant. How? Try to, try to guess how much for to ship this, you know, Little square bullshit leather bag with to- toiletries in it. Well, a number popped up, but I don't want to go too high because it fucks up your story. Ah, uh, so I'll say thirty-five bucks. <laughs> Next day is ninety-nine dollars. Get out of here. Two day is eighty, and then ground <laughs> is uh, ground zero is twenty-eight. Oh, you're grounded. I know. I'm grounded coffee. So uh, Now you can't brush your teeth for three days. I haven't. I, I'm, I'm chewing gum and hitting mints like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I got 19 Altoids in my ass, but they rape you on these deliveries because they know you need it. I got all kinds of shrooms in there and acid and heroin. It's all rape. I got It's all pipes. I got <laughs> concert tickets. They hit you with a convenience. Oh, that thing. ain't convenient. And if you buy eight tickets... Each ticket has a convenience charge. What? It should be one convenience charge. It's the same same group. I'm like, this is quite inconvenient, these charges. You got that right. San Diego charges. Yes, phone charges. But <laughs> either way, I got fucked up the pooper, and it's just a lesson. Pay attention. Get your head on a swivel. We used to, when I opened for Bert, he would do a thing called dummy check. Mm, the dummy check. You heard of this? Yes, of course. It's a big military jizz, and they, they do it out there, and you go, oh, of course I packed my, my toiletries. But you didn't, because you're a dummy, so don't believe in yourself, is what I'm saying. No, I never have, never will, but um, this is what you need. You need the Tuesday Alec Baldwin guy. Get the Baldwin guy. The guy who loaded the gun? No, the guy. Oh. He's the assistant. He keeps writing us emails. It's, I feel terrible for the guy. I think he's I got special needs. He keeps writing like seven-page things. He's the man. He seems... He's got me convinced, but I make eight bucks a week. I can't have an assistant. Plus, I'm, I'm pretty on the stuff. Yeah, you're but good. But you're a retard. You got, you're flying middle it. seats. You're missing shows. You're double booking. I know. I was in the, the overhead last week. <laughs> it's brutal. So, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll talk to this queen. He was a cute kid too. He's, he came to the live show. He's like, he's like, I'm here. Hire me. You come, guys. He's handsome. He was sitting front and center, and we were like, give us some dirt on Baldwin. And he's like, no, nope, yes. I'm sealed. So that's what you want. I can fuck kids in front of this guy. Exactly. You can go to pizza. Um, you know uh, Chuck E. Cheese and just blow everybody. And he's, <laughs> yeah. his lips are sealed. He'll get you the number. Of all the kids. Oh, I'll see you in the ball pit, Timmy. <laughs> and it's uh, maybe we'll talk. All right, Alec Baldwin just guy, hit me up. Get him. It would make me happy because I mean he's he's the resume is it's um, unbelievable. He's stacked. And I had to he, I had to write to him like this is adorable. You think I can afford Alec Baldwin's assistant? Well, I, wait. I can't afford you know. Who's a bad celebrity? I couldn't think of anybody. J.K. Uh, Sin- no, he's good. Uh, he's good. Oscar. He's yeah. good. Maybe R. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of tied up there. But wait a minute. How much is this kid charging is the question. Well, I think you worked that out. I'm not sure. Two uh, percent hey, we'll, milk. We'll do a trial run. How about that? Yeah, I think a hundred bucks a week, maybe. I don't trial know. and error. Seem oh, that uh, smart. No, yeah. no, and he's young. Okay, we'll get you a stimulus pack. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll talk there, Hit him Fatty. Up. All right. I would love to see this guy over here taking notes, Woo! and he's making edits, and uh, you know, maybe he can fix Chuck's back. These assistants, you oh, don't know what yeah. they can do. Maybe he can massage Chuck. Oof. Yeah, that's a tough gig. <laughs> All right. Nobody wants to work. Here we go, folks. Uh, we love you. Where are you going to be there, Sloppy Oh, Jalopy? my God. Have I got it? This weekend. This is the big weekend. Oh, Laugh. really? Boston, Ooh, for the hero. love of Christ, you gotta come. Hell yeah. Spread the word. Tell your aunts, tell your uncles, tell your fathers, tell your parish. Come on, Robert Parish. Yeah. Come on out. Next weekend, Buffalo with Matt Wayne, uh, Helium. Get some tickets for that. It's cold up there. It's miserable. You almost won the Super Bowl. You didn't make it. Sabres. So come out to that. We're going to the Sabre game Saturday. We're going to Sabre every moment. Uh, Lightsaber. Cap City, May 5th through the 7th oh. in Austin. You know I'm terrified. I'm not leaving that hotel, I'll tell you that. PTSD, no. PTS, my, my dick. Six Street, Six Cents. Yeah, so uh, come to that one. And then the special is just a couple weeks away, April 29th. Subscribe to my YouTube. 
Get ready for it. Watch it live the night it comes out. That helps the algorithm or whatever the fuck. Comment, like, tweet, jizz. And join the Patreon. This live episode is oh, insane. Banger. Insane. You gotta hear Siobhan eat shit. Yeah, he really dies on the anal there. All right, I'm in Phoenix. You gotta come out. It's a big room, folks. Stand up live in Phoenix. I love that town. I love those people. Uh, Baltimore. Dallas. Love that club. Uh. Uh, stand up at Huntsville, Alabama. Stand up live. We might be going to uh, England. Yes. Just going to throw that out there for some uh, British queef. If he wants to set something up, maybe we could do a little... Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, right, though, governor. So then we got uh, doing some shows with Bert. Irvine Improv out in L.A. I'm doing the Netflix Fest, whatever that is. Houston Improv all over Texas. Comedy Off-Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky again. I love KY Jelly. San Antonio, LOL. West Palm Beach Improv, Florida, Richmond Funny Bone, all kinds of good stuff. Brea Improv and Orlando. So, yeah, we got a lot of fun stuff down the pike, as they say. Pipe or pike? I think it's pike. No kidding. Wait a minute. the turnpike? Pipe would make sense. Down the pipe. Head on a pike. Coming down the pipe. Like when you water, you turn it on, it comes down the pipe. I think it's coming down the pike. Like the turnpike. Yeah, I think so. Huh. And then, you know, over time, okay, what, do you, what do you think, Shelbu? Or is pike by pike. itself something? A pike is a... I thought it was a stick. Your head's on a pike. Because in Massachusetts, we call the turnpike the pike. The okay. mass pike. Mass pike. Is that the thing? But that's short for turnpike. Right. Hmm. Uh. What the fuck's a pike? Take a pike. Go I fly a pike. Hmm. Well, whatever. It's All coming right. down the pipes and going right into the pike. Yeah, pike judge. And there's tubes. Oh, yeah. That's bad. No, well, you can watch the tube, <laughs> which is good. Or tube top. Tube top is great. I don't care for those, though. Oh, I love a tube top. I like a spaghetti strap. I'll take a tube bottom. I don't care. <laughs> That's a skirt. Ah, great. Skirt steak. <laughs> All right. That was a good ending. Yes, yes. Thanks, folks. Praise Allah. We love you. Queef it up. Tell a friend, get on the Patreon, buy a mug. Comedy. Cut it. Thanks for this, Mary. Mary. Oh, Mary. No.